guys, it's Colton from Colton Does Cars here, and today we're starting the video in my house for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. Excuse me? Thank you. Okay, so today, as the title says, we're going to be making this colder intake a little bit less terrible. And the way we're going to be doing that, well, first of all, this has already been installed, but this is part of it. Putting on an actual heat shield. This is a real carbon fiber AW1 heat shield. It actually works very well. I was surprised by just how well it works. And we're going to be replacing these couplers with ones that actually match and are actually not blue. And here are the things we're going to be using. We're going to be using VHD high temperature wrinkle plus paint that I definitely did not just read off the can right now. We are also going to be using an actual 3 inch to 2.75 inch coupler instead of this 3 inch to 2.5 inch coupler that we barely got to fit within an inch of its life. And some nicer looking black couplers instead of these ones. Okay, well, let's get started, and the way we're going to do that is by taking the whole thing apart. Awesome. I took a bold move and took an, a 10 millimeter socket and wrench, so if this is not 10 millimeters, I'm going to be really disappointed. Come on, focus! Come on. Come on. Oh, the mass air flow center so we don't rip it off. Filter off. In case you're wondering, the cat in the engine bay is not part of this. Successfully removed. The couplers, though, are going to be much more annoying. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the intake piping and we're going to put the wrinkle coat on it. And as I'm about to show you, um, you want to mask the edges around it so that the couplers still have something smooth that they can slide onto. And then they should be able to slide over the wrinkle coat, but you don't want to wrinkle coat the whole thing. You don't have to do this, but it is a nice precaution just so that nothing goes wrong. Okay, now we're going to start putting our wrinkle paint on. Make sure when you're spraying wrinkle coat that you spray it on really thick because otherwise it doesn't really work. And that is literally coat one that took no time at all. Okay, now I'm gonna get painting the other piece of the tubing. And in case you're wondering why I have these both standing up, it's so I don't have to wait for each coat to dry before I flip them over, and I can get an even coat on every side of it. Okay, so I went ahead and I put the first coat on the other piece of tubing as well. And you wanna lay it on pretty thick. You don't want it to be obviously dripping wet, but you do want it to be a pretty solid thick coat. So I figured while I was waiting for that paint to dry, because it does take quite a while to dry, I would go ahead and talk about this essential piece of a cold air intake, which is a heat shield. Now normally you'd kind of have a heat shield surrounding the whole area where the intake was, but because I ended up buying a $25 intake and then custom fabricating it, basically, so it's just completely unique, I could not find a heat shield that it would fit in perfectly. So that's when I came across this, which is an, an actual filter mounted. You can see there's these little little things that stick down and they literally just go under the clamp. And that is how this mounts. I just wanted to say that before I wasn't so sure if I was going to need a heat shield. I mean, I knew they were important, but I was like, how important could they really be? Well, obviously it makes a big difference. Because if you have hot air going into your engine, hot air is a lot less dense. So it's almost like you're running your car at high altitude constantly, and that really affects power. Even just with my stupid little intake I put on without a heat shield, I did have a slightly noticeable drop in low end torque, which that is something that happens with intakes in general a lot of times. And the filter was noticeably warm. It was not necessarily hot, but it was warm. So that means that there was hot air coming in from the side, which is not what you want. So since I couldn't find a normal heat shield that would surround it, I went ahead and I got this AdW1 carbon fiber heat shield, which just surrounds most of the filter. And I have to say, I am extremely impressed just by feeling it even. There is a very noticeable difference in how much cooler just having this makes it. 
It might not be quite as effective as the surrounding heat shield that you would normally have if you got a like KNN intake or something like that, or even for 350Zs, like a JWT pop charger. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that if you A have a custom intake on your car or the intake that you've ordered doesn't come with a heat shield, um, they are important and I would say if you can't find something like how I couldn't find something, I would go ahead and give one of these a try. This one being carbon fiber was $50, which still isn't too bad, but you can go ahead and you can find regular aluminum ones or neochrome, you know, aluminum ones for like $20. So it's worth a shot if you haven't tried it yet. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this in another video, but my dad got new wheels on his Skylark. You can let me know what you think, but I think they look pretty good. Okay, so status update. Um, so uh, the little piece of plastic that attaches from here to the filter broke off for no apparent reason as I was trying to attach one of the couplers. So now I gotta go to AutoZone and try and find that. And I also had to repaint the um, tubing because it came off because I forgot to scuff it. Whoops. Okay, so we were able to get a new piece from AutoZone. As you can see, we did have to drill out the holes a little bit because they didn't fit perfectly. But whatever, it will do, so now we gotta get the whole thing mounted up. So this is what the finished product of the Ringo coat looks like. It looks really good, I'm pretty happy with it. It's obviously, I mean, not 100% perfect, but it's pretty decent, so uh, I'm definitely gonna be happy to have this on the car instead of just the regular stupid aluminum color. It looks even better without the tape on it. That, that is awesome, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Okay, so, the paint's not perfect because we had to put it in and it wasn't completely cured. It was dry, but not necessarily cured. So the paint is a little bit messed up. I went and sprayed a little bit of an extra coat with what I barely had left in the can, just as we were finishing before I shut the hood. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys the finished product right now. So this is the finished product. Uh, as you can see, this paint coat's a little bit wet. Um, the quality of it's not perfect, but I think it looks a lot better than just having the aluminum color. The uh, mass airflow sensor is a kind of an annoying spot, but all in all, I think it looks pretty good. The uh, heat shield obviously looks way better than not having heat shield, in my opinion. I really like the carbon fiber look. So, uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, rate, comment, share, and subscribe if you have not already for more car content and more 350Z videos. Once I finally freaking get it fixed, and I will see you guys later.